All right, thanks all for attending. This is gonna be a really exciting session. We're going to have eight software demonstrations presented in lightning speed for you. We'll have seven minute presentations of the tools, after which there'll be three minutes for you to ask a couple of questions of the presenters. Our first presenter will be Jamie Heather presenting his tool Stitcher. Hi everyone. So I'm Jamie, I'm going to talk to you about Stitcher, so uh, in lightning mode. In TCR research, we often have a bit of a dilemma in that we require a full-length coding nucleotide sequence, but we have some more abstract representation. You know, we want to put genes in cells and test things functionally, but we have a, a list of BG, uh, VJ genes and CDR3 sequences. So the, the traditional way to go between these two things is kind of slow and arduous and involves looking up gene tables and codon tables and stitching together by hand, which is, um, it works, but it's, it's not very fun and it doesn't have the properties that we want for our research processes. It's not repeatable, it's not reproducible, and it doesn't scale well, which is where Stitcher comes in. It basically aims to systematize that process to um, automate the production of full of coding TCR sequences. So at its simplest, you just have to provide it that minimally reported TCR information, the V, the J, and the CDR3, and it will spit out a full-length sequence. Um, it's gonna do it in a few different ways depending on the exact format of the information you give it. So the, uh, uh, if you give it um, a CDR3 in an amino acid format, first of all, it's gonna take the genes you've provided and look up the corresponding germline DNA sequences from IMGT, GeneDB, and uh, then determine the junction sequence. So if you've got a, an amino acid CDR3, it's basically going to first translate that information and uh, nibble away at the ends of those translated sequences until it finds the longest overlap between the ends of the germline genes and the corresponding ends of the CDR3. So uh, I can't quite see what I'm pointing at, but so for the, for the V, it's gonna look for the longest suffix of the V, which matches the longest prefix of the J, uh, which in this case is C-A-S-S, -S, and vice versa for the, for the J, and then the intervening section which could not feasibly be encoded by either section. It's just gonna use a codon frequency table and pick the most common codon for that residue for that species. And kind of join the two, it's gonna splice on a five prime leader in a three prime constant region and spit out the full sequence. And as you can see, the, the terminal command used to achieve this is, is very straightforward. You're basically just telling Stitcher, these are the properties of the TCR that I want. And because this, this central section in black is basically codon optimized, you're probably not gonna make, almost certainly not gonna make the TCR nucleotide sequence that was found in the original recombination, but it will translate to the same amino acid, which often for functional studies is what we care about. Uh, you can also provide that CDR3 as a nucleotide sequence. It's basically gonna do the same thing, except it's first of all gonna translate that nucleotide sequence into, that, uh, into the amino acid and then repeat the process, except when it comes to that central uh, non-templated portion, it's gonna crop out the corresponding part of the provided nucleotide sequence which again is sometimes not gonna make the same nucleotide sequence as, as we saw earlier, some lovely talks showing VDJ recombination that nibbles spaces away nucleotide by nucleotide, but this is doing it codon by codon. So you, I don't know if you can see this second serine in the CDR3 is encoded by AGT in this particular recombination, but AGC is used in the germline. That T must have been deleted. Um, so AGC is what gets used in the stitched output. And again, you can see it's a very simple command. We've just changed the amino acid CDR3 for a nucleotide sequence. But you may have an application for which you require perfect nucleotide level matching. Uh, we have a function to do that. It's achieved via this SL flag, the, the seamless option, where it's basically going to repeat that suffix prefix matching, but at the nucleotide level. So it's going to trim away nucleotides until it gets a match. The only caveat of this option is that you require some extra contextual bases on either side of the CDR3, just to make sure you can find a unique match between um, your section and the germline genes. So that's how it works in the command line. We do also have a graphical user interface alternative, which uh, has all the same capabilities and a couple of other bits. One thing you can see is that it allows you to stitch um, two chains of a heterodimer simultaneously, so either an alpha, beta, or you can click uh, this button over here to switch to gamma delta. Uh, we've also got options. You can add any arbitrary sequences to the three prime or five prime of your rearrangements if you want to add cloning sites or stop codons or COSEX, whatever you like. And um, it's very straightforward. So you, if we click the example data up here, you can see for this given species uh, locus combination, it's populated it with 
with a couple of recombinations, which when we click run Stitcher, it's populated full coding nucleotide sequences for the alpha and the beta in these output boxes down below. And there's also a little box over here. I don't know if you can read it, but it says link chains. You can link the two uh, sequences together by any sequence you like. By default, it's a P2A um, skip sequence. So that outputs down here. So you can very, you know, in seconds, you can generate a bisystronic uh, synthesizable expressible construct. That's how it works, just to show that it works. Uh, these are some TCR sequences we took from PDB. So these are ones for which the amino acid sequence is known. Figured out the BJCDR3 combinations, fed that into Stitcher, and then translated the output and aligned it. And we can see that generally it works perfectly. It's all of the residues aligned with one notable exception down here in the alpha chain of this particular TCR where there's a mismatch. And on reflection, we went back to the paper that published this TCR, and they uh, had actually done some site-directed mutagenesis for affinity maturation prior to crystallization. Um, but the nice thing about Stitcher is it has this modular input. We can basically add whatever sequences we like to the reference and ask it to stitch with those instead. So this upper command was the command used to generate the original sequence using the, the native germline. Whereas uh, here you can see, I've just added that modified sequence to this particular file in the directory. It's an extra genes file, which we then um, tell Stitch we're using via this XG extra gene flag. And now it uh, perfectly recapitulates the intended TCR. So this speaks to the potential for Stitcher for kind of rational TCR engineering. Another common engineering thing that we like to do is to swap the constant domains so that we can put TCRs in a cell that already has its own TCR. Um, and this is just putting the DMF5 beta TCR um, variable domain upstream of different constant domains. So from top to bottom, we put it on the human beta chain constant, which it ordinarily uses, then the human alpha, mouse beta, human delta gamma, whatever constant you like, it's very easily achieved just by swapping one field in the command. And then when we've uh, synthesized and cloned these TCRs into jerk out cells as a reporter assay, we see that we are recapitulating the extent, expected specificities. We only see activation when they're co-incubated with cells with the appropriate HLA type peptide pulse with the cognate peptide. And we also have finally a uh, high throughput interface to stitch a, a script called Thimble, which basically allows you to provide it with a, uh, a spreadsheet of TCRs, uh, either single or paired, and it will run across them sequentially. It does about uh, a million TCRs in under 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, so this is, uh, I think Stitch is good, and these are the people I did it with, and uh, this is where you can find more information. Here's the paper, and the code is here, and you can come find me. I've got a poster tomorrow. There is indeed, I uh, believe it's at 2.06 tomorrow.